hello and welcome to a let me bore you to sleep dot com my name is Jason Newland this is let me bore you to sleep so only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes now I haven't been quite as prolific lately as previously I have if you wonder what that crinkling noise is, it's me. Well, it's not me, but it's. I've got the phone book in front of me. It's actually called the phone book. It should be called the phone pamphlet. Because compared to what phone books. Book, books phone books used to look like it is tiny I wonder if my name's in this I wonder if there's any any people with my surname the thing is the writing's so tiny L M N O P Q O J-K-L-M Okay Trying to figure where I am in the alphabet L-M-N So I'm N New Love I'll be before that wouldn't I Nevins That's not me New House Oh there is a new land Oh look at this it's hard to see it because it's so tiny plus the light the light's not shining on the book let me see if I can find it so this uh, wow there is a Jason but it doesn't live here I mean obviously it doesn't live well I do live here and my name is Jason, but he doesn't live where I do. He lives there. It's kind of an obvious statement. He doesn't live where I do. He lives in a different place. Well, yeah, obviously. But he lives in a different town. So I haven't made many recordings lately. I made a few. I made I think a couple of over the last week by just uh I couldn't be bothered really. <laughs> it sounds bad, doesn't it? But I just couldn't be bothered, you know. That's why I'm well, it's not the only reason, but that's part of the reason I didn't become a surgeon. I was very lazy. You know, I know that some days I'd go in and I'd be in the middle of a major operation and I'd just decide to have a tea break. I'd read the paper or something, go on YouTube. So that wouldn't be ideal. Also, I've been working on my websites as well. Because when I'm not in the mood to do recordings, excuse me, I'm coughing here. Yeah, when I'm not in the mood to make a recording, I can sometimes still 
you know, work on the websites. It's very easy. It's a lot of, uh, lot of just copy and pasting sometimes. But I've been working quite a bit. Put a lot of uh, effort into the letmeboyyoutosleep.com. And I've got six websites, but that's the one that I've put the most effort into. I've got, if you have a look at it, there's quite a few bits there. You can go and leave a testimonial if you want. Tell me how uh, annoying I am, or wonderful I am, or somewhere in between. You know, it might be like, when you listen to me, feel sleepy or or maybe since you've been listening to me you've noticed that you buy more biscuits so who knows whatever the response might be but if you know if you do want to leave a comment either on the website you know underneath this recording on the website or actually leave a testimonial and then it will start flashing up when people go onto the website and they'll be able to see your groovy words which is cool well whoops that's the can of coke ah. what else Yeah, on the website, I've, there's a few pages that I've added. So I've added pages, which if you click on the About, it has a list of just a few bits and bobs, po- other podcasts that I have. Uh, I think I have 10 sleep slash insomnia podcasts including this one this is was very unique for what it is it's, you know it's very different from the others well, they're all unique I mean everything's unique really isn't it I suppose in its own way even every fart has its own little special position in the universe you know <laughs> I have no idea what that means I think we should we should name farts. But then that would just that would just that would just lead to attachment which wouldn't be healthy. Now I end up in psychotherapy in thirty years time. I've lost so many farts. I'll say I'll end up in psychotherapy I'm already in psychotherapy kind of it's not really psychotherapy it's more kind of CBT stroke (coughs) chatting uh, kind of thing for the bipolar slash I'm into slashes today aren't I the bipolar slash emotionally unstable personality disorder that I've uh, been labelled with. So, yay. And now you're thinking, why am I listening to this crazy man? And there's a reason you're listening. It's because I'm crazy. And I'm fun. And I genuinely want to help. And you're not paying for it. Which means you can never doubt whether or not I'm doing it for money or doing it to help. Because you're not giving me nout. 
That's why I don't have any food. <laughs> it's not. Trust me, if you saw my belly, you'd know that I eat. I don't go about food. Also, I'm not shy when it comes to stuff like that. If I didn't have enough money for food, I'd just knock on the neighbours' doors and just ask for some food. I don't care, got no pride. Pride doesn't fill your tummy. That should be the title of a book. I actually had a really good title of a book earlier, but I've forgotten it. It was, uh, it was really good. It was like some it was like a self help book to help with memory retention, help people with memory. Like, forgotten it. There was another book I had, another idea I had. What was it? I'm trying to think it was a good title. I was very pleased with myself. You know, you do something and you're like, yeah, I like that. I'm very pleased. Very pleased with myself. I, sometimes I do, I say something and I do waffle on these recordings I waffle and I can just be myself when I do these no one to please no one to judge me I can just say whatever I want and just be boring and it's really good because being boring isn't just about there's lots of different levels of boring and I can go on every possible level whether it's talking about something whether it's describing a situation in such detail that it just becomes so tedious and the thing is everything can be boring I could go to a Spice Girls concert and the reason I'm mentioning them is because they're currently concerting in Ireland, I think, somewhere. They're, but they're in, in concert at the moment. They got back together, apart from Posh Spice. She was... Uh, I don't know what she's doing. How would I know? They discovered the cameras that I hid in their house. So I can't tell you what they're doing anymore. But uh, I could go to their concert. I could go to the Spice Girls concert. And it's not really a reunion. It's a re-re-reunion. Re-re-reunion. I don't know how many times they've come back. And uh, I could tell you about the concert. And you could be the biggest Spice Girls fan in the whole universe. And I could still bore you by talking about the, your favourite thing. Now that's a skill not worth having. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my dad must be so proud. Well, if if he is, he hasn't told me. Booty, 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 boo. Oh, he's now going into therapy mode again. We're not your therapist, Jason. 
We just want to go to sleep. Can you get on with it, please? Dance, monkey boy, dance. Okay, I'm dancing for you. I'm dancing. Yeah, I'm not dancing. So let's say, what shall I do then? Okay. And now I'm going to talk about something really boring. See, everything's boring. To somebody. I was speaking to a friend and he said uh, recently, and he's been all over the world. He sails all over the world, you know. He, he rents over the last 30 years or whatever. He's rented sail. <laughs> Is it sailboats? I don't know, whatever. And he's just, because he's a sailor, that's what he does. Like, as a, for fun. He's not actually a sailor, as in, he doesn't work on a boat, but he used to when he was younger. He used to be a fisherman. And then he became a comedian and a nightclub owner. A comedy club owner as well, so, yeah, it's kind of moved. He actually went to college, and or stage school, but stage college or whatever in America. And he went with Robin Williams. He actually he showed me a video, he put it on his Facebook page, with him and Robin Williams that they did together, a part as like a project with their part of their um, course and then of course Robin Williams went on to do really well obviously and I was a big fan of Robin Williams it's more and Mindy I know it's those the thing is people that it's like any generation isn't it any any group of people uh, like Peppa Pig I'm never really and I've tried I'm never really going to appreciate Peppa Pig if I'm honest it's never going to be yeah and I suppose I probably would feel nostalgic in the future with Peppa Pig if I'd kind of had to sit with a child watching it for, you know, hours on end. Luckily, well, you know, depends which way you look at it but luckily I haven't had to do that but I do know what it's like to sit for hours and hours on end with a small child watching the same program or the same film over and over and over and over again now that's boring but not to the small child. For instance, my little brother, he was born the day before I was eight years old. So, well, not, it doesn't, it's not a logic, a logical uh, reasoning for this, but I ended up spending quite a lot of time with him as he got older. And once I got into my teens, he was, what, six or five or whatever, I don't know. And there was a film called Animal Olympics. And it's a one word, Anim animal impit like Olympics animal Olympics and that's what it was it was basically a bunch of animals doing the Olympics like it's a cartoon uh, 
uh, or animated film. And my brother, my little brother, little but, yeah, my little brother, he watched that film over and over and over and under and over so many times so so many times that well I you know just I knew it word for word the whole film word for word and because I was babysitting him I ended up sitting there watching it as well because back then there was no internet I suppose I could have read a book could have done some knitting cross stitching and I'm not even joking there because when I was little when I was little in junior school I was about well, I went to high school when I was 11 for 5 years before that I was in junior school it's all changed we've become more American with the way we describe things now um, so I went to high school first year, second year, third year fourth year, fifth year and for those that stayed on sixth year because sixth year would be A levels I left after fifth because I left with no qualifications at all zero my grade was U in everything which was what does it U stand for um, was it U So undecided, no, that wouldn't be right. Underwear, nope. Umbrella, Ella, Ella, Ella. I don't know. Un unrecognised, no. I think it was you. It basically just meant it was non-marked it didn't get a mark it was so bad it wasn't even worthy of a mark but I did that on purpose kind of and uh, so I didn't care because my whole career was I had a career set up I was working in a chip shop I knew things were going to be brilliant. I got free chips. Didn't ask much when I was 15. Because I was still 15 when I left school. Left school in April. Had to go back in June to do the exams. And then that was it. And I wasn't 16 till August. So I started working full time at 15. Oh yeah, so do you got now? We do because I think in America it's grades, isn't it? Grade one, grade two, grade three, fourth grade, fifth grade. We do year one, year two, year three, year four, whatever. And I think it starts much earlier. So, and I still don't know. I don't know when it started. I think it was in the nineties. Maybe it was the 2000s, I don't know. But they... Year 11, I'm in year 12. Like, what, what is that? 
Uh, well, you know, I don't know what year, what age that is. But I suppose the, the people involved, the kids seem to know. Which is probably handy for them. Because I suppose if you're going to school and the teacher shouts out, Year 14, come here, we have free cake. I suppose you'd need to know, wouldn't you, what year you were in. But when I was a kid, we didn't have that. We just, it was a junior school, it was the first, second, first, first, fourth, I don't know, whatever however many years there was in that school and then high school first year, second year, third year, fourth year fifth and then sixth form so it was the first year, second year, third year fourth year and fifth year but then they changed the sixth year to sixth form or sixth year yeah, sixth form. So now, all these different years that they have starting at, I don't know if the first year one starts when you're born, I'm not sure. But when you get to the age of 17, or 16, you know, so that, so after, I don't know, whatever year it is, year 17, or year 16, year 15, sixth form is still called sixth form, and they haven't changed that, sixth form, because no, year one, so first year, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then sixth form, sixth form still the same doesn't make sense to me but when I was in junior school I liked cross stitching I should take it literally I did I had a really stern look on my face but uh, eventually I was told you know you can enjoy this enjoy it now Wait till you go to high school. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you won't be able to do cross-stitching in high school. I said, why not? And uh, I was told, well, the reason, because... Oh, I don't know the reason. I said, well, why are you saying it to me for then? I said, I don't know. I'm just waiting to clean the toilet and you're taking ages. Can you hurry up? Okay, bloody janitors. And uh, I liked junior school. I didn't like it. I mean, I didn't, I didn't wake up in the morning doing handstands and, you know, break dancing on the way to school. You know, I wasn't spinning my breakfast bowl on my head with excitement and anticipation, you know, but I, I used to go, I turned up, and some things I wasn't that keen about, if I'm honest. Um, the learning bit, I wasn't, just didn't, didn't really see the point in that. I liked English, I liked reading, and I liked writing. Um, but that's the only thing that I liked. You know, I'd, I prefer to read and learn from what I'm reading, I think, than from somebody talking. about it but not always sometimes I like to hear people talking about it and 
but in a different kind of a way. For example, I I like to listen to uh, like uh, I don't know. I've mentioned it before, like Bob Proctor or. Who else? You know, sort of like motivational uh, speakers, but not just, but ones that have something to say, not just for the sake of it. I don't, you know, I get a little bit, a little bit bored with the, you can do anything you put your mind to, you can do anything. That's, that's good, but I was like, I want to hear how. And, uh, there's some speakers that actually have stuck to their guns. Um, in a sense, it's a weird terminology, isn't it? Stuck to their guns. Yeah, I don't like that terminology. I'm not going really to use that anymore. Stuck to their bow and arrows. No, it doesn't work. Stuck to their axe. Mm. Stuck to their machete. No. Stuck to their goldfish. Yeah. Things some people don't like it. If you change things. Like the other day I was talking to somebody. Or they were talking. And I was just there. And my ears were listening. And one of them. There was two people. One of them says... Oh, did they say? Uh, I can't remember. It's not a great story, is it, when you don't remember it? It's not really like I forgot part of the story pretty much forgot the whole story I remember the story I just don't remember the content anyway how it went really is one person said something and the other person said something else that's pretty much how it normally goes isn't it can you imagine how good it would be if everyone just had said that in gossip you know what Pauline said, Pauline from work said about Joanne. I don't know, what did Pauline say about Joanne? Well, Pauline said something about Joanne. I said something back to her. Oh. You know, I heard uh, Steve and Alan talking in the toilet while I was pretending to do a poo. And I heard them, I heard them talking about you. What did they say? Well, Steve said something, then Alan said something back, and then Stephen replied, and Alan agreed. They cuddled for a little bit, and there, yeah, that's it. We could actually have peace in the world within about a year. Imagine if everyone just didn't tell anyone anything that anyone's ever said. All those people that like the drama would just stop talking, wouldn't they? It's like, what's the, what's the point in talking? It's not causing pain to anyone. Ooh. Wow, I like that advert. I can't tell you why, but I like it. I like it a lot. Well, there's a sandcastle. So I've got the telly on while I'm talking. It's on mute. Which I'm sure you probably wish I was, but it's on mute. But the reason for that is because when I turn the telly off, it makes some weird, loud clicking noises. And I don't like it. 
really makes me grumpy inside. So I'm watching this TV show called Star. Never watched it before. But it's just full of pretty people. Like all of them. All, all of the... Well, okay, okay, I just saw one that isn't. But they're kind of all young, attractive men and women. It's mainly about women. But it seems, from the looks of things... They're dancers or singers, I don't know. And there's oh, there's a couple of really lovely faces. <laughs> just the face, don't don't like the rest of them, just the face. No. That's a good boy Andre's come to do to toilet, that's it, nice. Being very lazy, he normally lifts his whole tail up. I don't mean he doesn't actually lift it up with his hands, but he lifts, you know, when he does a, a squelch, but for some reason he didn't, he just like lifted it, his, sorry, he lifted it sideways. It's very lazy. Lazy to me. I don't know if I'm lazy or not. I think I'm just very particular about what I waste my time doing. Oh, great. You know what? That's the chair. There are... There's pretty much a whole newspaper on the floor. It's broken up into the sheets, you know, individual sheets. All on the floor. One, two, three, four, five. About 20. 20 papers, piece of paper. And what does he do? He's just gone and done it on the carpet, just on the edge of the paper. Seriously, the equivalent of something I saw years ago on... Actually, no, I'd... I think it was a person when I was doing the insurance told me this is uh, when you when I did the insurance I have to ask if you had any accidents claims or losses in the last five years fault or non-fault blah blah and uh, the person would say no or the amount of people would say no and then Later on, they said, "Oh yeah, I forgot. I did. Yeah, I was in it. Yeah, I remember I had a, had a write-off in a sixteen-car pile-up. Like, how did you forget that? Anyway, the this person said to me, "Yeah, I I shunted into a car in a supermarket car park." when I was parking my car and I said oh, okay so it was it was just a bang it was it was no huge damage just a a broken bumper or something like that and I said right okay so and then the person started laughing and I said why are you laughing and he said, oh, it's all right, it's just my husband's tickling my feet. I said, but you said you were single. And she said, it's not really tickling my feet, I'm just made it up. Well, why are you laughing then? She said, well, 
I'm just remembering the occasion where I crashed my car. I said, okay. She said, do you want to hear about it? And I got intrigued. And I thought, yeah, I might as well. I mean, I'd, I didn't see there's anything to lose, really. Just saying, I might as well. If you want to tell me, you can tell me, you know. I'm here till 7 o'clock tonight. I'm not going anywhere. And she said, well, I didn't need to know that, really. I said, yeah, I know. But anyway, what, what do you want to tell me if you want she said well here's what happened it was in a supermarket a big supermarket car park and I parked behind this car but I over went you know the line and I thought I took my brakes off but well put my brakes on but I hadn't and the car went into the back of this my car went to the back of that car that was parked I said yeah you already kind of said that she said yeah but what I didn't mention is this I said what she said that the car park was empty other than that other car it was the only car in the car park I said, what? She said, <laughs> she said, yeah. There's probably about 400 spaces and that was the only car, only space taken. And I managed to hit it. And I think I did have a laugh. think kind of a weird I remember once I said to this person said oh yeah so what, what's your occupation and he said I'm a bar manager and I said uh, in what in what situation what kind of job is it because you know you know, you know, it's kind of jobs, hotel, it could be a restaurant, it could be a nightclub. And he said, oh, it's a hotel. My next question to him was, is it a licensed hotel? And he started laughing. And then I started laughing because it took me a while to figure out what I'd just done. Like, asking him if he, he's a bar manager is it a licensed hotel I mean obviously it has to be licensed to sell alcohol otherwise you know it's a, it's a, a juice bar you know. and we laughed and I remember dancing around the desk couldn't stop laughing I had to dance around because I always found that dancing helps me to stop laughing Sometimes. Sometimes it keeps it going. Depends on... You know, it's really weird when I watch this program and all you see is just the facial expressions and the, the movements of the mouths and... They look like good actors. It actually looks quite real. If you just go, I think you can tell if someone's a good actor if you turn the volume down and you just watch their faces and it looks really good. Mind you, if I turn the volume up, <laughs> they might be really, their voices might be completely incongruent with what they're saying. So the lady there was like, she was absolutely really sad and crying. But, you know, if I had the volume up, she might be saying, 
I'm really upset. Really, really upset. Ooh, ooh. So it might have been incongruent with... So she might not have been a good actor, but... It's Andre sneezing in the background. But without the sound, it looks pretty, pretty good. Cross stitching. One of the, my favourite things I ever did at school was cross stitching. And I never kept it up. You know, once I left um, junior school, I went to high school and they didn't have those kinds of crafty things anymore to do. It was all about mathematics and, and I can't remember. What did I learn? I didn't learn anything, but what did I... I learned I didn't like going to school, but I already knew that anyway. What did I learn? What lessons was I forced to go to? So I had geography, history... Um, what's the other one? Geography, history, maths, RE, so religious education, and English, PE, so that was not the condition PE, but the uh, what was it physical education not premature you know and what other ones did I have science that's it science and I was ah not just that woodwork as well and maybe even metal work So it's quite a few different subjects, really, isn't it? It's quite a lot. English, maths, history, geography, history. English, maths, history, geography, RE, PE, science, woodwork, metalwork. So that's nine. That's less than a hundred. That was enough, wasn't it? P E R E. I get a little bit muddled up because I didn't take much notice at the time. It makes it a little bit harder to remember it thirty odd years later. But I did, yeah, I definitely did go to school though. What else did I do? I remember I used to... So football, I didn't really like football, so I didn't really, didn't partake. And what I used to do, and I've mentioned this before, so you know that I'm not lying, is... I used to spin around until I got dizzy and then I fell on the floor. That was that was what I did during football, and then I we had hockey, and but I was banned from that because I used to chase people with a stick. 
because I was always little at school everyone was all pretty much bigger than me but I didn't let that I didn't let that get in my way and I had I remember I think someone hit me with a stick in my shin and it hurt and it was like a tackle or something and no I can't allow someone to hurt me so I kind of hit them with a stick and chased them down just chased them and I got banned wasn't allowed to play hockey again after that Uh, what other tennis I was allowed to play tennis but I didn't play it very often I wasn't really I, mean, I don't mean it in a I don't mean it in a derogatory term but it's a bit repetitive I mean as far as I'm concerned once I hit the ball over the net I don't want it returned to me I hit it over the net because I don't want it why do you keep hitting it back and I hit it back again and then it come back again it like stopped returning the ball to me I'm, I'm hitting it over the net because I don't want the ball don't like it, don't want it, don't want it this side of the net. You stay your side of the net. You almost turn into some kind of apartheid. Like, you stay your side of the net. I'll stay this side. Now keep that ball. And I want that ball over here. You keep your dirty ball. I don't want my dirty ball. You, you, you. It wasn't dirty at all. It was, wasn't dirty until I touched it. But even that didn't stop me hitting it back. Actually, it probably helped them. We don't want that. We'll hit it back over the net again. I don't want the. I don't want the ball. Take it. I thought about like changing the ball for a little bomb or something. Just hitting that over the net. See what they do with that. I'd probably hit it back again, wouldn't they? Little stink bomb, that kind of thing. Oh man, do you remember stink bombs? See, you might be too young or too old or just never experienced the pleasures of stink bombs. And you used to be able to buy them from the joke shops and stuff. And they were brilliant. And they were the stinkiest, eggiest, pongiest things ever. And, you know, it would go for a period when like, literally every day someone would let a stink bomb off. And it would be so funny. I'm sorry, I'm nearly 50 and I still find it funny just thinking about it. Because it was foul. It was really, it was like, well, just, yeah. I suppose if you think about it I suppose, I'll give you an idea what it's like get yourself a dog uh, and feed it tripe and then basically attach yourself via some kind of funnel to its posterior and just wait and the gas that comes out that's that's what you're looking at with you know a stink bomb it's like proper proper bad it's it's like burping into a gas mask you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you know, it's got nowhere to go. It's like, phew. Mind you, burp is gas, isn't it? <sighs> oh, 
what other sports did I do? Netball, or actually call it basketball. It's exactly the same game, isn't it? Netball for women, basketball for men. It's the same thing. It's a hoop. You get a ball into a hoop. Now that I liked. The thing I didn't like about it was people trying to get the ball off me. And because I was little, I was so much shorter than everybody else. And I was pretty much nearly a year younger than most of the people in my year. Because I just turned 11 when I went to high school at the end of August. Some of those kids, one or two weeks into the year, the, the new year in September would be 12 so they're nearly a year older than me and that's a lot um, at that time of the year that time of life there's a big difference between a 12 year old and a 13 year old you know it's just physically and you can't just take a little step ladder with you to play basketball the gym teacher made sure of that made sure that everyone knew that made sure that everyone knew that I was the one that had brought the step ladder and you can't say can you stop there a minute and just walk up the step ladder and then say okay now now let me try and get the ball there are ways of getting the ball off them but it involves contact with other balls but uh, again that's wrong isn't it apparently so but I liked the the chucking the ball into the net or into the, the you know the yeah it's a net isn't it whatever you want to call it the hole the the metal thing up in on the wall whatever it is now I find that interesting but just for fun, not for any other reason. Just like, for me, football is the penalties and that I would be interested in you know, someone being in goal and me just kicking a ball at the goal. But, so I couldn't really do netball or basketball because of my size. Yeah, everyone just... All I had to do was just hold the ball at their head height and I couldn't reach it. If they held it above their their head, you know, I couldn't see the thing that was so far up. So, you know, just had to put up with that. What other things we used to do? Netball. Sometimes you do five-a-side football indoors. Again, I just... I used to turn it, twirl around, but I didn't used to fall down because the ground was too hard. So I used to fall, swim, spin around and then try and kind of lean against something. And then what other things? The only thing that I was any good at I don't, still don't know why to this day really but the only thing that I excelled at got no glory for it but I excelled at it didn't win no awards because it wasn't really classed as a sport here it was just something to do I think it was like a a lazy teacher's lesson you know when a teacher couldn't be asked to do anything couldn't be bothered to get the kit out, you know. Couldn't be bothered to get all the footballs out and walk to the pitch and or any of that stuff. He just wanted to have a lazy day and finish early so he could spend more time watching the sinner shower, you know. So he, what they did is they'd have um, what do they call it? Dodgeball. With, uh, I think it's actually a, an actual sport in America. So I would have been good at that. I could have been a dodgeball player. Like in, if there'd been a league, like a proper league of dodgeball, 
I would have been I'm not saying necessarily Premier League but I would have been you know possibly semi-professional I reckon with my ability because I was very good at it very good at dodging the ball and I could do all kinds of acrobatics so it's, for some reason I don't know I could I could just jump in the air and be bendy and all that kind of stuff and that's before I even started doing karate once I started doing karate I was even more flexible but you know I could do the splits and all kinds of stuff like that when I was kind of not all the way down not not so me yeah not so I hurt myself but um I was so good at dodgeball so dodgeball for those who don't know is you've got a ball basically and you got <laughs> you got to dodge it it's, it's you know the name's in the name the game's in the name um, and each each side of the pitch has got a different team I was always picked last of course even though I was good at it, I was always picked last. Um, seriously, there was people. There was a bloke. There was a kid in a wheelchair that got picked before me. And it's not the easiest game to play if you, you know if if you've got a ball being chucked at you. You can't avoid it if you're in a chair. But still, I'd be picked last. I mean, there was actually, yeah, there was there was a kid. He was actually off ill with measles, and he still got picked before me. I phoned him up. They said we're picking you before Jason. Just to let you know that. It's like well, that's rude. That's before mobile phones were around. I mean, literally, they went into the office and spoke on the loud on the TV on the telephone and put it onto loudspeaker for the whole school to hear. I had to put it on a tannoy system. But it's okay, I showed them. Especially when I got my job in a chip shop. Haha. <laughs> See who's laughing now, I thought. And So you've got this ball and you, you chuck it at each other. You've got two sides and um, basically it might be a, a toin toss, a toin toss, coin toss to see which side has the ball first. Sometimes the case is the, the gym instructor, teacher or whatever, you would just chuck it in the air and, you know, but you weren't allowed to cross the line the middle line, so whichever team you're in, you have to stay on your side. And people just start chucking the ball. And whenever you got out, you went to the other side of the team, behind them, outside of the court. And then when the ball, you could chuck the ball to them and then they could hit you from behind. So basically you had the ball coming from both sides. Well, let me tell you, I was often the last person that got hit with a ball. It's not a very exciting ending to that story, but it was the only sport throughout my whole school in that I was any good at and I was really good at it I mean really good and I think it's good to hold on to those 
those things. And I think the reason I was I wasn't interested in other sports like cricket. The first time I played cricket when I was in junior school, I had all the all the get up on. You know, I had one. I had the the body armor, uh, shin pads. Uh, or no, I had one shin pad on, uh, and everything else on, helmet and stuff. And I was about, I was in bat, and the bowler managed to hit me in my one knee that wasn't protected. And it hurt, obviously it hurt so much. And uh, I chased him with the bat because it hurt me. Of course he had a bat, I mean, he'd used his ammunition already he didn't have anything else I had my bat was he going to use the wickets to defend himself no I was after him but then I got banned from that as well so it's I was hoping that we'd be able to sort of the school would take up golf because I used to have a golf golf set I remember hitting my brother with a golf club and seeing the results of that, it was lovely. So I'd, I just, you know, knowing my luck, I probably have had golf and someone had hit the ball and it probably landed on my head. I seem to attract balls. This is a weird statement, but I just... What other things? Rugby. I just laughed. I laughed. They laughed. It was one of those situations where we all laughed at each other. I turned up for rugby. I saw what they were doing. Banging into each other and tackling each other. And they looked at the size of me. So I laughed at them. They laughed at me. It's like, see ya. And that was the end of that. It didn't even start. You know, there was no argument on that one. Because no way was I going to go in without a stick. At least something to <laughs> to defend myself with. They said these huge kids like jumping on top of me. No, if I wanted that I'd have gone to boarding school. No. So, didn't do rugby. Now the only thing I would have liked to have done was, was boxing. If there'd have been boxing at my club. I'd have been, I'd have loved it, absolutely loved it. I'd have been there every time, regardless if I was any good at it, I'd have just loved it, it'd have been fun. But they didn't have that. Then I probably would have got kicked out, say, you can't bring your golf club into the boxing ring. Where's the fun? Anyway. I'm going to go. And I shall see you soon.